the question of dialogue, when you have a when you have situations like that, to me is, is a very is a very the absence is a very big concern. Uh, dialogue. Here's my last slide. A group of cartoonists in Europe, uh, around the French, very famous uh, French cartoonists, decided the cartoon war has to come to an end in, that, in, in a sense which the cartoonists should be working much more for peace. And uh, it seems to me that the uh, task for sociology is to carry on the legacy of their kind of analysis oriented to greater integration rather than further division and separation within and across borders. In the present geopolitical climate, I think this is an awesome task, we cannot refuse it. There's no laughing at it. <laughs> that 
can say. Okay. Yeah, you know, I mean. But you don't know for sure. No, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, this is what it, when one looks at the role of religion in, uh, in conflict, in ethnic conflict, and so on and so forth, which is something I've been studying and looking at. You don't know what it's hard to really establish whether or not some religious figures that have a certain high status in their community find it expedient in some ways to generate or to maintain the conflict. You know, there's a two-edged sword. There's really a two-edged sword about religion. I mean, uh, two edges that in, in many ways Religion can really, as the word religion means, bind people together. Can it bind people from different religious communities as much as it can bind people from within the same community? It's a fascinating kind of empirical question. In, in some ways, it may well be that the imam, the one, the, the, because I haven't seen socioeconomic study of the situation of imam in Denmark in Europe. Most of my impression on that is to Europe could come. And therefore, it's a little bit like, you know, it's a little bit like Paisley Smith, uh, forget, Paisley Smith. Reverend Paisley in, uh, Ian Paisley. Ian Paisley. Paisley. Ian Paisley in Northern Ireland, for whom the worst thing was to have, in fact, the peace process go on, because he would be, you know, uh, it may be well like that for some of the imams, you know. Can I just make a follow up? Please, yeah. 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 The Grand Mufti of Egypt, for example, which is the second highest ranking Muslim figure in uh, Sunni Islam, which represents 87% of Muslims, and his reaction on this was to basically say that uh, the Prophet himself, when he was in uh, certain parts of Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, people threw rocks at him, criticized him, said all kinds of terrible things about him. And his reaction uh, to that was to pray for those who were themselves attacking him. Because he had the option that is said according yes, to Islamic yes, belief yes. that God sent angels down and gave the prophet the choice about what to do. And so that was the reaction of the Grand Mufti of Egypt saying that that should be the yeah. correct tone and response. So I, that's the you point. know, uh, to, to try to do justice uh, to, to this topic, I've started to read the Quran. Yeah. <laughs> Which, it's fascinating, uh, and one gets in some ways the impression that what the that what the prophet is glorifying is uh, is obviously glorifying Allah, right? He's not glorifying himself. So that would sort of make sense in, in terms of uh, uh, you know. What, what Said about the Grand Mufti. In other words, uh, after all, if I, now if I understand, if I understand a little bit more than I did two years ago, the meaning of jihad, right? It is not. We tend to think of jihad as uh, uh, I think we tend to think of jihad as being directed against another group uh, of infidels and so on. But as I understand it, and, and you might be able to amplify this, it really is a, as much of a resistance against one's own base of inclinations. Right? That's right. That's the greater jihad. And which is the greater jihad, which, which I think in some ways, uh, the asceticism of Muhammad was to that now, right? That's right. And all of the rules of warfare for the yeah. lesser jihad, the actual fighting, there's verses in the Quran that relate to self-defense and so forth. And the terrorism, the Quranic word for terrorism, like 9-11, is given jeff. And the punishment for that is execution. So that's very different from the language.